Welcome guys to the Macros Bodybuilding and Powerlifting Podcast. Hopefully you caught part one with Andy where we talked about getting to very low percent body fat and all the kind of variables you should be measuring and how you should monitor those to get to those levels. So definitely check that if you haven't checked part one. Uh, But now we're going to be talking more about kind of picking a coach, what to look for, how to be a successful online coach and kind of just more about business and how Andy's got where he is because he's doing a fantastic job and has a fantastic website and is doing really good things. So I want to learn more from him. So we're going to delve into that. And I think there was something Andy just wanted to touch on initially. And we were, we were just talking about kind of the fact he wakes up at 5.20 a.m. and listens to Rocky first thing in the morning. And uh, I get up at 6 and I have an <laughs> awful Apple alarm, which just pisses me off. So I press snooze for about half an hour and then get up. <laughs> Yeah, so it's, it's a, so hello and uh, thank you for uh, tuning in. Um, I hope I don't disappoint after that marvelous introduction, actually, Steve. I appreciate it. Uh, all right, so yeah, I have the Rocky theme song, um, Go. I have it full blast on my phone. The speakers are pretty good on the new iPhone. Um, I have my phone away from my bed, so I have to get up or Ooh, cover my like ears. Um, so I, yeah, so I just have to get up. And also, because it's on the floor by the wall, and I live in a, a like a tower apartment block thing. Oh, yeah. I do worry that I'll wake the neighbours because sometimes I'll hear their alarms, and uh, that will get me out of bed because I don't want to piss them off because of my laziness. So I set the alarm for a reason. But five twenty. Uh, <laughs> now why five twenty? Um, I don't know if it interests you. Um, it's quite so specific I've got, time. It, yeah. So I've got so the gym is ten minutes walk up the road, but I need a shower in order to be able to function so get up shower pack my stuff slam a protein shake uh, walk the 10 minutes out the door get changed bang i'm in the gym at six a friend of mine will meet me there at six he needs to be home at 7 15 um, so that he can get his little boy dressed for kindergarten uh kindergarten nursery school we call it don't we see oh, yeah. that's the american influence <laughs> i've been abroad for 11 that is years so american <laughs> oh, no i'm sorry mum. i'm sorry dad i'm sorry <laughs> um it's not an elevator it's a lift ah um so um so yeah he needs to be back home to um take his little lad to school he's three um and he's my best mate he needs to lose weight, otherwise he's heading for a heart attack. And I figure that the best thing he can do right now is, one, cut out the alcohol, cut out the large gin and tonic that he will have when he gets home from work. That will help him not store that extra fat for the day and push him over the calorie balance. Um, and undo the hard work of... Because he's, he's not munching lots of food, he's just drinking too much, to be honest. He's Scottish, and we know how they are. <laughs> It's all right, I'm in Japan, I'm safe. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no Scots um, in Japan apart from him. <laughs> and, and, and to be honest, the Scots have a sense of humour about these things, don't they? Um, and if you know, pretty little flowers, they tend to be from... No, nope, we won't go there. So, um, I think what he needs to do is if he gets to the gym and he's consistent with going there five days a week, so weekdays, um, he'll make better decisions on his diet throughout the day and is less likely to slam that gin tonic Mm -hmm. right at the end of the day yeah um so that's my plan for him this year because if he heaven forbid something happened to him and i didn't do this because i wanted a line i'm gonna be at the gym anyway right Mm -hmm. but just because I wanted an extra hour, hour and a half lying and something happened to him, I don't think I'd ever forgive myself. So that's basically why I get up so early. But also, um, I find that I can work in the daylight hours. I can't work at night. Yeah. I just, I don't know, I switch off. Some people are different, but I'm just like, okay, it's night time, it's relax time, it's go out and meet people, or it's Netflix. <laughs> right, that's just how I chill out. So, no, yeah. that's. That's really commendable and selfless of you. It's really nice. So it's nice to hear nah, those I'm sorts of things. It gets me out of bed and like then I can slam through my day and by lunch I'm I'm pretty much then free afterwards. I've got that space to think and create and meet 
and how am I going to build the business? How am I going to improve this thing? How am I going to do this or that? So I spent all yesterday afternoon restructuring my menu. Seems like a really tiny thing, but that's the kind of anal bastard I am <laughs> when it comes to building my website uh, because that is my online business card. That's the portal for where people find me. Mm-hmm. And we're going to talk about this in the podcast, but it's, you know, I want to leave the best impression absolutely possible and I cannot leave anything but my best work as of right now on the web because you only get one shot at a first impression right so you've said that you haven't updated your website in a while mm-hmm. get on that all right yeah people are finding you through um, you know social media and that and they're not necessarily judging whether they're going to hire you based on your website but there are some people that are going to find you through google and you want them it it it, it behooves yourself if I, am i using the correct term I think you are. to put your best foot forward mm-hmm. right so get on it um bite the bullet take a saturday out get that done no it's i think you're completely right and actually i've had compliments on my website and i get shocked because then i i, I don't think because i haven't updated in ages then i look to someone like your website and i'm like oh that's really nice um so oh you're what's going it, what's, to mine what's now it, it, yeah, yeah going right now revive revive stronger.com i thought it was revive stronger.com kind of goes in line oh. with ripbody.com it's quite uh <laughs> Boom. we should team up we should collaborate <laughs> oh wait we are oh that's <laughs> nice i like that I, this is the first time i've actually been on this yes Ooh, should you bulk or cut okay so this pop-up that you've just got is that enabled for mobile um good question i think it is it, it needs to be switched off because google changed their rules annoying. the 10th of january this year websites that have pop-ups for mobile will now be penalized in google results wow. right because it's blocking them from getting the content on desktop it's different i'll send you that article after um you might have to shoot me an email to remind me but um yeah uh convert kit put out an article so you want to remove all pop-ups on mobile. A little banner at the top is fine. Anything else, exit intent, welcome mat, any of those things, nope. You want to take those things out of there, yeah. But I like this. Um, I could do my usual self, which is to be really picky with this. Menu, no, like it, like it. Logo, not blurry on high retina screen. Um, looking jacked. I've immediately got immediately got what this website is about without having to read anything, and that's important. Um, online personal training. Uh, yep, simple, easy. Online store, perfect. Uh, you got your before and after there. Nice. Um, you've got this in a circle, and you've got hashtag Revive Stronger on the right. Um, what I'd say for that is you, you can't really quite see all of the hashtag. It's Revive Strop, right? Um, so maybe instead of a circle, make that one a square. Um, boom, latest articles, great. Um, see what my amazing clients have to say. Yeah, cool. I mean, you're praising your clients. Clients above self. Um, I think that's a good way to go for people that are getting in this industry because I think we, we, we work, we live, in, we live in a vain world. Mm-hmm. Um, people are hiring us basically for vanity. Health, maybe, sometimes. Vanity, mostly, if we're honest. Um, Especially us, we don't work with Gen Pop, not really. Um, we work with people who are, we work with the gym nuts, is basically how I like to think of it, and they wouldn't mind us saying that either, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, the website, in my opinion, the website, the content we put out needs to be about the customer, right? It needs to be what you, what we as coaches can do for the customer. Mm -hmm. So this is client testimonials. This is how they can help themselves. This is how you have helped this client. This is in this situation what I would do for this client, right? Demonstrate your knowledge so that you become the obvious choice when they want to reach out and get help, right? Mm -hmm. So put content out there that's exceptionally useful so they'll come to you anyway, and then when they're like, you know what, I need some help, or they've got a friend who wants some help and can't be bothered to read it, or they're like, oh, no, this is this guy, Steve Hall. He's really got really nice website, really good content. You should follow him. And I think he might be able to help you out with the coaching. And then they're like, oh, boom, 
click that coaching button and there you go, mm -hmm. right? And we only need one, 0.1 percent. Obviously, it depends on your traffic to click that button, yeah. and then 10 percent of those to actually make it and become clients. And as long as you've got enough traffic, happy days. Mm -hmm. So you've got all these people that you're helping, and you've got um, all these people that you're passively helping because your content on your website's awesome. Who now feel that they owe you a beer in wherever they live in the world. And then you've got your income from your coaching clients, so you're helping one-on-one -on -one that you find really rewarding, and they do too, because they're getting results, right? Yeah. So now you've got beer tokens in cities all around the world that you don't even know about, right? So I'll tell you something funny. Like, So I just moved to Tokyo, um, and I don't really know anyone here. I'd lived 11 years in Osaka, second biggest city, moved to the big T. Um, so there's 14 million people here. It's huge. Um, and... I sent out an email at the end of December. I moved in on the December 28th. To my Japanese list, I sent out um, an email basically saying, in that end of month newsletter saying, look, I've just moved to Tokyo. Don't know many people. If you fancy getting a beer, and it was deep down in the email, you know, if you fancy getting a beer, click this link and uh, I'll get back to you. Mm -hmm. And it logged their email addresses. 150 people wow. right, clicked yes. So like... Of those people, how many would buy me a beer? Probably all of them, right? So it's amazing, really, because mm. all I'm doing is I'm put, we're putting out websites just trying to display knowledge um, to grab clients, but at the same time, the the passive effects of that is we get to help loads more people mm -hmm. which is amazing it's amazing yeah so we just create wins everywhere we go as long as we put uh, the effort and yeah. attention into making our websites good no no definitely and i think if you were to delve into my website further you'd find and and this it's hard for me not hard for me to say it but it's not nice to admit that there's like you said with the spelling mistakes online like you don't want to see those things I've definitely got some bit, not necessarily spelling mistakes and things like that, but there's bits like, like you said, you can't see the whole Revive Stronger on one of those images. There's little things like that, which are probably just me being a bit lazy because I have got my client work. I've, I'm trying to put content on social media and there's like a lot of things juggling that I'm doing. And I, I'm interested in Andy, do you, do you do all your own website or do you have a web developer or how do you go about that? So I had a guy called uh, John. He helped me um, choose a theme and uh, I told him roughly so version let's say I've gone through three I'm on my fourth version of the website let's say now um, iteration although there's been multiple tens of thousands of edits um, he helped me put together the third and then I built off of there myself um, so I've pretty much done everything myself but he helped me put together my third one um, and yeah, just building it yourself, use WordPress. Um, it can be a little bit daunting at first, but they've got templates that are set up like you don't need to be a coder. Did you make yours yourself? Yeah, I used, uh, I think it was Jonathan Goodman had like a starter pack for blogs and I basically went through that and then, yeah, just started it through. I think it's Optimized Press was my oh, yeah, yeah. through at the moment, the theme. Yeah, yeah. I use Theme X if anyone's interested. It's really, really highly customizable, highly customizable, and they've got loads of templates. There's loads of options out there. The the key is just to start and then build little by little by little as you go. So I spend my downtime trying to poke holes in my in my website. But I guess it's kind of my personality anyway. I try and I don't try to poke holes in things. I just find holes in things. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I just, I'm a, a bit picky by nature, I guess. Um, yeah, I think critical thinking is essential in what we're doing. So I think that's a really good trait to have. Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> yeah, yeah, it can yeah. be too much. You probably get those clients yeah. who come to you and they think too much. You're like, just chill out, follow it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, so like if I spot a typo, right? That's my night ruined until I can get to my computer and uh, and edit that. Uh -huh. So, like t talking about um, 
edits we we mentioned this i can't remember whether it was in a previous podcast or whether it was before that or or what but i'd said so i think 359 edits i've made to the coaching page as yeah. it currently stands um this is just that one percent improvement um that i strive for every it used to be every day when you're starting out it can be every day but then aim for it every week so if you're 50% better at the end of the year, no, actually, no, because it compounds. So it's not 50% better. It will be way more. But even still, you know, if you aim uh, Kaizen, they call it in Japanese, just trying to oh, keep yeah. improving and improving your, the way that you coach, the way that you explain information, the way that you present yourself on the web. If you can always aim for, have the mindset of, I am not done. I can be better. How can I get better? Every criticism that we get is a chance for improvement. Now, there are some dickheads out there who, you know, you just want to dismiss what they say. But listen to what everyone says. Mm -hmm. Take a step back and take your ego out of the equation. Look at what they've said and they think, do they have a point? Because all of the edits to my website and... I, I bang on about the website because that's the only place where people really, the, the website is where they make the decision on whether they're going to hire me or not. Okay, we've got, or whether they're going to apply to hire me or not. Obviously, the emails that I have with them before they become a client after then are important, yeah. very important. But before I even get my shot to try and convince them of my um, skill, right in the email so i'm not just you know i'm not just a good article writer but i can actually personalize stuff tailored for them mm -hmm. um the website is is the is the portal for it right so that has to be good mm -hmm. and that's why i bang on about um the importance of the website no, or whatever yeah. social media platform you have i think that was one of your one of your things within your book at the end where it was a note to coaches was kind of the fact you need to have work ethic and like you said you're doing edits all the time and it's a process you're getting that little bit better all the time and there's so i mean there's so many guys online so many people are like they're looking they're just like we're all looking for that fat like loads of people are looking for that fat loss quick trick like quick way to build muscle and there isn't one it's just you've got to just keep doing it and that's what's worked for me and it's always what's worked for me in life whenever i did well at like exams it was just revising more and more and more to do well in the gym you just have to do more and more and more and you have to keep like progressively overloading the amount you do and keeping on top of information and actually on talk talking about information and i know you talked about it i think in danny lennon's podcast in yep. that when you're a coach and you're online that i get pressured in keeping on top of everything, which I think is a really good thing because I need to, because I've got to be kind of up there. But sometimes it can get almost overwhelming in that you can't keep on top of everything. I mean, I can't, there's Alan Aragon's research review, uh, Brett Contreras has a research review, James Krieger now has his um, website membership as well. And then yep. there's like Shreducation out there, there's everything, there's so much information out there and it can be quite overwhelming as an online coach to try and keep on top of all of that. How do you manage all of that? Do you have like a, a way or a system of keeping kind of, do you just keep to a few people or what do you do? So really it might sound harsh, but I can't read everyone's like, in fact, no, it doesn't sound harsh. It's, it's bloody well obvious, but I can't read everyone's work, right? I can't. And really, I don't have the interest or the patience to read everyone's work. Everyone wants you when you're in position of authority. I get, I'm, I'm established, right? So people look up to, the, the, they might look at my website and look up to me. I'm just a regular dude who's just been in the game a little bit longer than them, right? But they want me to read their website, right? And, you know, I'm happy to have a quick glance, but I'm not, Again, this sounds bad. I'm not really going to learn anything new because they'll just be getting their information from the researchers and then those that analyze the research who are the same guys that I'm getting my stuff from. Mm -hmm. So I'll develop my own opinions from the research or from those guys, right? I don't really need to get it from someone else. Like, of course, there's something that can be learned from everyone, but we only have so much time. So you need to choose where you spend it. Mm -hmm. And I will spend it on Alan Aragorn's Research Review, um, uh, Examine.com's Research Digest, 
Um, whenever James Krieger gets a new article out, I'll get on that. Um, even Brett Contreras and Brad Schoenfeld, like half of their Facebook updates, which are gold, I just don't get a chance to get because I don't know if you're anything like me, but I'll wake up and there's like 30, 40 Facebook notifications gone off. And, right. And I didn't realize until, and, and like, oh shit. Uh, what, um, what am I? I need to go to the gym, then I want to answer my emails, <laughs> then I'm going to get to Facebook. But I've already clicked the button, and then if I leave them, then they're all going to disappear. So yeah. I'm like, well, skim, 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 what do I need to get? I didn't realize, but recently, I've actually, any event invite, any event invite, my brain doesn't see it anymore. <laughs> it, it does not register. It's learned to skip past it. So it's like, even events around town, here, physical, real friends, not just internet people <laughs> who add me, right? Like, oh, you didn't come to my blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, did you invite me? I'm like, yeah. It's like, <laughs> not, not a clue. Not a clue. So, and then I, I realized that my brain's actually just been switched off. It's dull to the notification. So it's like you have to carefully pick and choose. Yeah. Right? Um, Greg Knuckles, um, strengththeory.com. Um, I'll read his stuff. Um, I'm subscribed to Brad Schoenfeld's uh, emails. Um, I thought I was subscribed to Brett's, but they might have disappeared off into the spam filter now that I'm um, thinking about it, right? But, I mean, if I've got those things down, those five guys down, I know I'm pretty much covered. I'm not going to miss anything big. And if anything big does happen, it'll bump up in my Facebook feed, and then it's happy days. And if someone wants me to read an article, uh, it depends on my mood and which depends on my level of freedom and flexibility at the time. If it's a Monday, no. Don't try and ask me anything on a Monday. Forget it. That's when I do my, I've set up my work so that I do most of my client updates on a Monday, right? If you send me an email on a Monday, a random request, and you send an email on a Friday, you, uh, it's, you're going to get a different answer, mm-hmm. right? You ask a question on a Friday, well... You know, I'm probably going to spend more time with you just because I can. So, and I think I I think you said in Danny Lennon's podcast that you have to accept that you can't know it all. You you can't yeah. like you are one person. You can't know absolutely everything. And I think that is a really good thing to accept. And it's something that helped me was because sometimes clients will ask me a question, and I, and in the past I felt like I had to then go and research it and find the answer. And, I'd probably be shortcutting, like searching La McDonald on this certain subject and then try and give my view on it or whatever it might have been. Whereas actually accepting that I didn't know and referring them some, to someone else and only answering questions I was very confident on helped me a lot more. And actually it was it's better for the client as well. Is that something you do as well? Yeah, I, I th- and I think that's important. And I think that, that's a sign of maturity to turn around and say, I don't know. Actually, I'm sorry, I, I don't know about that one, but um, this guy with this website, he's got a lot of information on it. Um, I would try and look it up for you, but I think that probably steps outside of the, not just the realms of our agreement, but the um, the professional scope of where I feel comfortable giving advice, because mm-hmm. I don't want to give you the wrong advice, so... Uh, I'm just going to have to say I don't know about that one. Um, and I guess that delves into your openness and trust that was also within the book. Kind of how right. important that is to have that relationship. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so people like to present a perfect picture of themselves. Um, but I got no data to prove this, all right? But if you are clearly, how can you say you're clearly trusted? Uh, if, if, you're, if you're prepared to talk about some vulnerabilities, if you're prepared to not show that you aren't perfect, if you're not fucking, ah, said the F word, sorry, mum. Um, <laughs> she ain't going to be watching anyway, is she? But if, if you're not image crafting, is that the word? The, Photoshopping, mm, Adobe games. Yeah. <laughs> 
Adobe games, is that really a thing? Adobe game? <laughs> I think is that's it, what the, it... the cool kids are calling it. So <laughs> Adobe games, yeah. If you're like you can go down that route, right? But I think there's a large percentage of people in the population that are not gonna trust someone who's perfect all the time. Right? You as a coach, you don't have to appeal to everyone, right? If you want to For every pro bodybuilder out there who's got a zillion followers and is doing, you know, great Instagram shots and is doing his training and that makes nice, quick, easy viewing and people um, find that appeal. A lot of people find that appealing, right? For the, for all those people, there's an equal number of people that find it a turn off, and they're like, you know what? That doesn't relate to me. I don't believe that this is um, actually what he's doing. There's probably some uh, assistance in there. Um, even if I'm going down that path myself, I don't see how it relates to me um, because he's so far ahead. And then you come across a guy who um, is like yourself and you're like, oh, he's actually he's just kind of three steps ahead of me and I can get there. That's inspiring. Mm -hmm. That's inspiring, you know? Um, like uh, old Ronnie Coleman videos. Like, wait, baby! Right? <laughs> like, it, I mean, that's awesome to watch, right? But I don't look at it really and get inspired. No. Right? I will look at someone who's I, I see myself in, has gone through my struggles that I've had and has come out the other side um and made a really positive change um if you can present that in a really genuine way um people will respond to that mm -hmm. I think and you'll attract those people you will be then dealing with the people who you know best because you are one of them um and yeah and and that's why i have um uh, certain requirements on the on the coaching intake page, mm -hmm. uh, which I, I know you're going to ask about as well. So, yeah, I don't try and work with anyone. I don't work with anyone. My coaching is not right for everyone. Yeah. This is key to giving a good service, right? Sticking with what you know best. And that's not being lazy. It's being diligent. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to actually, it's, I was going to ask, did you initially start out that way? Did you have quite specific requirements from the, the get-go? Were you, because that's quite, I think, that's a, a mature approach to have if you did it from the start. Because I know for myself personally, I did that mistake. And I probably still do it slightly too much where I do take on people who I know I can help, but it probably is going to take me too much, t a lot of time and effort. And maybe I can't help them as well as someone else who has that niche sorted and could do it quite quickly and efficiently. Uh, right. did, so did you was that like a process you got to because yeah if, if anyone goes to Andy's site and I recommend you do and look at the coaching like it's very clear the type of person Andy goes for and I think that's a good thing because then you've got the special expertise to help that person and you can help a lot of those people because then you've got that systematic approach that really works well for that person yep and you've also got the materials um, prepared or a set of materials that's going to appear to so let's say I've got um, someone's having trouble with their adherence there's probably five ways they're having trouble with their adherence I try and pick out which way they're having trouble with their appearance and then I've got some guidelines for each of those five ways that I can now choose and send over to them but if I'm working with because and that's in my niche if I'm working with everyone, then now I need 30 different sets of rules or I'm writing everything from scratch, which is is fine, but you're then going to miss things. Um, you're not going to give your best work as if you've got materials that are already prepared. Um, so my to, to answer your question, I fell into a niche because likes attract. Yeah. Generally, people came to me who saw they either like my writer there. In some way, I resonated with them, right? 
And that was naturally people around my age or slightly older or younger, around my level of build or slightly uh, weaker or stronger, around my level of body fat percentage or slightly more or less or not really the body fat percentage thing that much, but, you know, um, similar backgrounds, likes, appealed in the writing style, right? So then I worked with everyone to start with but when I say everyone I don't mean everyone just the people that I appeal yeah. to so of course like the bell curve right so this is this is the people that I'm now targeting but I'm still going to get some that come off of this end and come off of this end right so who are those people and am I going to be able to help them best no so I'm now I now know who I work with best after a year of doing it so I'm going to cut these people out respectfully I mean, I'm still giving them all this free information on the website, right? But respectfully, I'm going to decline to work with them. And instead of emailing them quite a lot first and then tell them no, I'm just going to put it up front as a requirement on the coaching page. Yeah. So what I have on here is male, over 20 years old, three months of serious weight training experience minimum and comfortable with the compound lifts, experiencing counting macros, ability to cook most of your meals, low stress, good quality sleep, no injuries or medical conditions, non-vegetarian, you're a natural trainee, no steroid use, good work ethic, open mind, and hungry to succeed, and you never, ever email me from your phone. That's it. Right? So, not hard. You fit. If, if, that, that, if you're in there, good. If you're not, sorry. Right? Never is there an exception. Mm -hmm. Because this comes down to either I was saying it at the end of the last podcast, or I can't remember if I said it at the start of this one, but... Why are they going to trust you? Because what you say you do, you do. You keep your word. Always keep your word. Mm -hmm. All right? So there's no exceptions. And because I don't make exceptions, people know I don't make exceptions, right? Yeah. So I'm not asked for exceptions, and then decisions are not personal. Because I'm not making personal decisions. I'm sorry. You emailed me from your phone as you were going through the application process. I said I don't accept emails from smartphones. I've said it three times on the application page, on the email responder, and then on the actual questionnaire. And I said specifically that if you do reply to me from your phone, after I've asked you not to, I won't work with you, I'll decline to work with you. So I'm not gonna work with you. Mm -hmm. So don't ask for an exception, because I'm not gonna work with you. And I know that sounds harsh, but this is the exact reputation that I want. Yeah. Because I can't afford anything else. I'm not prepared to, you're going to work on my terms if you want to work with me. And if those terms aren't okay with you, then please don't work with me. But I'm upfront about everything so that no one's upset later yeah. on, you know? Right? right. It's like, it's like if, if you're like really on the ball with like chasing up people who apply for your coaching really fast and then when they become a client, all of a sudden your emails start becoming snail pay slow when you've got problems. Yeah. If you're consistent with how you email people or however you contact them, Right? And then when they become a client, it's equally as consistent. Well, then there's no problem with that because that's what they're coming to expect. Yeah. Do you want me to go through those um, requirements and tell you why? Or um, If you think it'll be value, like, valuable to up-and-coming coaches, and things, definitely. I, I was just going to say clarifying mm. expectations of mm. them and what they can expect of you is something that's kind of really important, I think, for when you bring people on because if they start and they're like, hmm... I don't know whether it's acceptable to email you back and forth on my iPhone like all the time or if I can contact you via Snapchat, Facebook, yep. everything. It becomes, yep. As a coach, it becomes like you're like overwhelmed and it can be quite difficult. So that's something I had to start doing was like have a, when people sign up, they have a clear, this is the outline, this is what you're getting, this is what you can expect of me, this is what I expect of you. And if it doesn't follow in line with that, then there's going to be problems potentially. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's not to say that um, someone who can contact you everywhere is a bad way of doing things. Well, it probably is. But um, if you're going to do it in Snapchat, do it in Snapchat. Uh, if they're going to have your phone number and you're going to do phone consulting, do it on your phone, right? But you need to set up the boundaries there, or your life will quickly become difficult. Um, and you think that you're doing your client a favour now, and you're thinking. I'm going to be the best. They're going to have 24 hour access to me. They're going to be able to get me by this method, this method, this method. And I'm going to have a premium charge for this and it'll be two grand a month. And I'll just need three clients like that. And boom, woo, happy days. Right now, 
you think that's going to help your client, but it's not because they're going to become dependent on you and they're not going to be able to think for themselves. They're not going to be given that space to think and the results won't be any better. It might give them a level of comfort and if people are paying you for comfort, then I can understand that. But you're, hopefully you as a coach, you're coaching because you want people to get the results that they've come to you for, not just that comfort. So you need to be very careful of how you set things out like that. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing on the, on the coaching requirements that I'd go through is low stress and good quality sleep. If someone's really, really stressed, they're not going to get good results. If they're not sleeping well, they need to sleep well first. Because if they're having trouble getting the results, which they are, because they're coming to us, stress is probably the cause, mm -hmm. sleep is probably the cause. But if they're injured, I'm working online, right? I, I, I'm not a physical therapist, right? Um, okay, so now if they've had an injury for like years back and they know that, okay, Squatting, deadlifting is a no-go, but that leg pressing is perfectly fine and this, 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 then, okay, yeah. like we can work with that as long as they display a level of maturity in understanding that uh, about the programming and that they've been doing this for a while, you know? But if they're injured, I say very clearly, I'm not a rehab guy. Mm -hmm. Can't I can't help you there. And the reason that we need to be careful about this as coaches is They've come to your website, they've read our articles, they've, they've downloaded the book, they've got the email course, maybe they've paid for a book and then they come and they're like, you know what, yeah, I'm going to hire them for coaching and they click that coaching button and then they see that they're, ah, oh, I'm not in the required, fuck. And they're like, oh no, 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 I want to work with him, right? And, uh, right, bitterly disappointing but this is what you're coming up against in some cases, right? Mm -hmm. And people don't like to hear it, but that's how it has to be, mm -hmm. right? And so that's why I think it's important to be very clear. Um, anything else? Um, yeah, natural trainee. Yeah. When someone's taken steroids, the answer to their woes is take more drugs. Um, if you're not interested in figuring it out, I'm interested in figuring it out, right? I, I get off from figuring out someone's got a problem. How are we going to figure this yeah. out? Like if the if it's like take more, right? Uh, that's, that's doing nothing for my education. Yeah. So you know, um, and then I just state there: good work ethic, open mind, and hungry to succeed. Um, so I'm just saying, if you're a lazy bastard, go away. And then the last one: never email me from the phone. So this is basically. If you're on your phone, you are distract. You've got a small screen. You're going to be distracted. Um, you're not going to have easy access to all of the information that I've given, and I do write big detailed emails. You're not going to be able to open a spreadsheet and then edit that spreadsheet and then attach it to an email neatly, along with some photos of a certain file size that I like, which is not megabytes, because it spanks my email account. Um, you know, it, it's not that you can't do these things from a phone. It's that it is very difficult to consistently do these things right from a phone. So by making people email me from their computers, it ensures that hopefully they're sat down, they're not distracted, they're able to focus, they'll be able to look back through the information I've given them, they'll be able to answer their own questions, um, some questions from that information, and then they can write their own. And then we can make the most of each of our time, right? Um, that's why I have the no smartphone rule. And since implementing that, I know it's quite unique. I know I'm fighting a losing battle. Um, but since implementing that, my life, for it's been four years, my life has been a lot easier in my coaching life. Because it used to be a nightmare, like, oh, I forgot to attach this. Ah, oh, blah, 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 right? So another, like, preventative method against that is I only email people I only respond to emails sent to me the day before. Okay. Right? Sounds maybe that sounds crazy, but there's no emergencies in dieting. Right? If you keep that consistent always, 
there's never any need to respond really fast, right? Oh, so I'm in the pub and I've got a pint of Guinness and there's a chicken breast on the menu and uh, what? How is this going to fit my macros? Like, that's not my. I don't do that. Yeah. So I'm sure some people do. I'm sure there's plenty of people that do, right? If you're after that kind of coaching, this isn't me. Mm-hmm. It's not what I'm good at, and it's not what I've got the patience for anyway, right? You need to be able to figure that out yourself if you're going to be successful in the long term. And those are the only people that I'm interested in working with, right? So that's my smartphone rant ah, out of the way. No, I, I really like that because it makes it's really making me think about my own coaching in that. Um, and this is why I asked you about the, the when, whether you do mentoring or Skype kind of business inquiries and stuff. Because obviously you, you're in a good place and you've got there and you've learned many lessons. And something I find myself doing is maybe I don't have good systems set up like yourself and have these rule, like hard and fast rules in place because sometimes mm. I do find myself, like my girlfriend will get annoyed at me because I'll get maybe a client update me a bit late. I'll be like doing an update when I'm going to be like eating dinner with her and I'm like, oh, I have to delay this because I want to get back to them today because if I don't get back to them today, I have to be get, get back to them tomorrow. Whereas in yeah. fact, I have a rule in place that men say, if you don't update me by this time, it's next week. And I know that by letting them get like get their way, that it's gonna it could be a recurring problem, and it, it's yeah. happened. But I feel you feel bad, and you get that guilt because you're like you want to help them, and they're a friend. So yeah, how do you, I guess you like just have people to... treat you, and it's same in all relationships in life. People treat you how you train them to treat you, right? So you go out on a date; she's consistently late. Don't meet her again. Doesn't matter if she's stupidly hot. Doesn't matter. She has no respect for your time. That's it. Done. Move on. It's not going to end well. All right? How we set things out initially um, is how things will proceed. So um, my clients update, send their updates to me on a Saturday. I answer their updates on a Monday. I live in Japan, so I'm GM. T- I'm uh, nine hours ahead of the UK. Um, um, I don't know how to say this so that the Americans will understand, but I'm GMT plus nine, right? Um, some people are going to be on eight, on uh, West Coast time, right? So there'll be like 16, 17 hour difference there, right? So if I say to them, update me on a Saturday, and then I'll answer their emails on a Monday, some people are going to be waiting 48 hours. Some people are going to be waiting 24 hours mm-hmm. ish. That's okay. There's no emergencies in uh, in dieting or, or training. And if there are, then they need to go to a hospital. That's not in our uh, purview. Is that yeah. the word? Uh, I've been away for so long. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so that's that's how I set things up. So then my working week is, is very busy and then it kind of tails off and then I have space to write and think and create and meet and do things, right? Um, if someone doesn't update me on the Saturday, let's say they update me on a Sunday, but it still gets in my inbox by Sunday, my time, I'll answer it on the Monday, right? If they, If it's like one minute past and it trickles into the Monday, my time, I won't respond to them until now, bearing in mind my email rules. So it'll be, it's an email that was received on Monday, so I shouldn't email them back until Tuesday. And I wake up pretty early, so, you know, it's that will be 30 hours. Mm-hmm. Typical response time anywhere from 30 to 8 hours, mm-hmm. right? Because there's always the day before. I had some emails in the morning. But because they um, emailed me late, I'll email them now on a Wednesday. And it doesn't matter how nicely you ask people. If they know that you will... I've tried being firm, I've tried being soft, all different types of things. If you just don't email them back till Wednesday and you're like, ah, I'm sorry this is late, please try and get it to me on a Saturday because that's how I've set up my working week. It, people fall in line, Mm -hmm. right? And that's, and it's okay because that's what they've signed up for. I've actually, they've read that and initial by that in the initial agreements, right? So... You know, the, like, I haven't had anyone complain. Yeah. Uh, ever. Uh, 
And I've also like got a safety feature. It's like if you don't hear from me in 72 hours, um, check that it's not a Japanese national holiday here. And I give them like a, a little calendar. So I say I'll have those off. Um, and send the email again, but write this certain thing in the subject line. And then I've got that flagged so that it will send to my inbox and be bumped to the top and definitely won't go in my spam because very occasionally emails will go to spam. Mm -hmm. Very, very rarely though. Very rarely. Um, Because, you know, once they email you first, you'll put them in your address book and that solves that issue. Like 99.99% of the time. But occasionally, like really occasionally, um, I'll, I'll go through my emails and I'll click one and then... Maybe I'll think I've answered it and then come back and click the next or whatever, you know, I'll, I'll screw it up. We're human, right? Mm-hmm. But um, it's not a problem because, you know, if someone messes something up, right, whether you're upset at them or not depends on whether they've got a history of just messing stuff up all the time, right? If you're not a person that messes stuff up, then people are understanding of that, right? Yeah. And again, this kind of comes back to then to reputation, keeping your word, how you present yourself online, how you treat people. Um, when, like, mate, the beauty of having rules when you interact with people is that things don't become personal anymore. Yeah. Um, because that's emotionally draining. Should I take this person on? Should I not take this person on? Mm, nope. Got a set of rules. Those are rules. Those are rules. Mm-hmm. That's it. Not okay. personal. Sorry, mate. Not personal. That's definitely something I think. I think a lot of yeah up and coming coaches can really take uh, they'd be tempted not to have the rules because they want to help more and more people but for you've been in the industry 5 years I've been in now I'm at a much earlier stage than you but I, I and I look up to you and I'm going to take this advice massively on board because I've already experienced it myself where when I did first start I don't you don't get as good results with these people that you make these excuses for that you are like all right I'm just going to help them because I want experience it's not good experience when you make these clear outlines and I and I have a much better audience now that I serve, not better people, just I can serve them better. It's yep. I get better results, everything with the company grows better, I can help more people and yeah, it's I, I would definitely st- people should have this like streamlined approach in mind and yeah, yeah, identify who you can help, be yourself and I think similar to yourself, I attract people who are very similar to me, so it's like people who want to get into powerlifting or bodybuilding who are around my age who are around my kind of physicality and there are loads of people like you um so i think that's a great angle to go down if we could kind of just finish on maybe a couple of lessons the biggest mistakes you maybe made when you were in the industry and how you kind of got around them and grew how did you get kind of how did you get the reputation you've got now if you could put it down to anything if there was i know when I mean, it was great even networking with yourself, going to seminars and things. I think some people underrate that because maybe the information isn't brand new. Maybe it's not. But I, I went to 3DMJ seminar. I met you. I met Danny. I would never have met you guys if I hadn't gone to that. And that kind of opportunity was really good for myself. So, yeah, mind ex- well, touch on that. You never know when you're going to have a conversation that just totally takes your business on a different path that you didn't even know existed. You don't know what you don't know. Um, so, Sol um, Orwell, he does examine.com, he gave a really good talk at uh, Body Power um, 2015, and he was talking about the value of grabbing emails from people when they come to your website. I wish I had done it earlier. Um, I implemented that advice. Then it became, okay, what am I going to give as a free giveaway um, to get their email address? So I put together all of my startup guides for nutrition. Um, which is a hundred pages, like it's is really good. Um, like the, the point being, make your free giveaway better than what, better than paid products that ninety nine percent of people are selling. Right, mm-hmm. just just over totally over deliver. Right, so I put together that, and I already had the content, so I had that um, put together. Um, and then it was like, okay, well now I could upsell people. What can I upsell them? Well, I'm already full with coaching. There's no point in saying, well, um, sign up for my coaching because then it will just be, now you're in a waiting list and it's, and it's not really fair. And it's not kind of how I, it's not how I roll. Mm-hmm. Um, 
so then I was like, well, I could write a book about the one thing that I do know. So I'm, I can't do a research review. I'm not brainy like those guys. I, um, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to be correct. What, what can I do? I can talk about what I do, about the adjustments that I make, the tweaks, the book for guys who are like, can you, can you teach me, please? Can you coach me? Can you be my mentor in the industry? It's like, sorry, no, I don't have time. Mm-hmm. Um, and more importantly, I don't know you. So mentoring someone is very personal. Yeah. And the information that the, 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 for me to give someone the tools that I've developed, I need to know they're a good person. Mm-hmm. I need to have met them, shook their hand, stared them in the eye, know that their heart is right. Because mm-hmm. otherwise... They could go out. It could just be one of these sleazy, charlatany guys, right? And I can't have that. So, what I did, you know, I was, I was getting a lot of requests, and I was like, okay, let's put a book together for these guys. So it's how to coach yourself to shreds, and then also in the back of the book, I talk about what basically we've talked about in this podcast now. Um, yeah, uh, so th- that led to the books. And books, that book led to Eric Helms approaching me and asking him if I would um, uh, help collaborate on his muscle and strength um, nutrition and training uh, pyramid books, which were only videos at the time, um, which did really well. And it's formed a great friendship with someone who I looked up to and now is my brother, right? Um He's very much my um, senpai, we would call it in Japanese. He's very much my senior. Um, it's very much still someone that I look up to. He's is is more jacked. He's uh, he lifts more. He's smarter. He's he's just leagues above. But still, you know, it we're you know mm-hmm. like Andrea. She, she's fucking great. Like yeah. this girl, Bundle Avenger. I've got a podcast coming out with her. She's um, I just need to edit it down. Like, she, like she's 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 bundle of energy. She's awesome, man. Yeah, really. Uh, have you had her on the podcast? Have yeah, you? yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, good, good. Yeah. Um, you know, like these are. It's like family. When I went to their conference in London, it's like ah, I'm home. It's family. Mm-hmm. Um, but going to these conferences, meeting people in person, it showed me a new business model a new revenue stream, this passive income revenue stream, and gave me the confidence that I could do it and I could do it in the right way without selling out or yeah. what I perceived to be selling out um, without scamming or any of this other shit that really was the only thing that I had to go on as a representation of that world. But I realized, you know what, we, we can we can make money and we can do it right and we can help people. Mm-hmm. Um, so... That's really been the best thing that I've done in my career is going out and meeting people and having conversations and having two ears open and like two ears, one mouth and using them in that ratio, right? Yeah. Not that I'm doing it this here today. But <laughs> well, I'm doing is... it. That's the thing. I'm doing it. And, <laughs> and ever, the audience haven't even got their mouths, so they're just listening and hopefully taking it in. So any, any up-and-coming coaches, yeah, that, that's brilliant advice. And, and I think it's good to have said you don't know what you don't know because it was just similar i definitely have had a kind of a helping hand by mike israel because i just with mike samuels who also helped me out from um healthy living heavy lifting always get the wrong way around i think you know mike uh samuels so yeah we know of him i I don't i don't know him well i can't say that yeah so Yeah. yeah anyway we brought mike israel to uk and then having done that and met Mike Israel and done all that with him, I've now got the podcast that we do quite regularly together. And it, it you never know where it's going to... I didn't expect that to happen. It just happened. You just have to kind of try things out. So, yeah, I think that's really good advice. Just it, you, things just... they are There is luck involved within the industry and there is consistency and hard work because you were noticed by Eric because you had consistently put in and endeavoured and made that great book and he noticed that yeah um, and the, another thing that's helped me get my connections is we've reached out to ask a lot of people if we could translate their work and put it out in Japanese and my pitch was basically hey Brad Schoenfeld love your work I think it could help a lot of people in Japan 
I can't afford to pay it, you for it, but I would like to take X, Y, and Z article, have my guide translate it and put it up on our website for free um, and help spread the word here in Japan. Mm-hmm. Who's going to say no to that? And then like the extension of that pitch is, I don't know where it might lead, but this is kind of the start point. Where that might lead is it might eventually they get enough of a reputation where they can then come to this country and speak and maybe there's a scope for a Japanese translation of one of their books. Mm -hmm. Um, But this is, you know, reaching out and always when you see someone and you want to make a connection with them, let's say like Alan Aragon, love that guy, love him. Um, We've become, we've become like friends, genuine friends, uh, especially over the last year. Um, you know, still someone I really much look up to and respect. But what you have to appreciate is if I'm getting pinged on Facebook 30, 40 times when, from now until when I wake up, right? Imagine what it's like for him. Yeah. Right? So instead of seeing what they can do for you, think what can you genuinely from the heart, if you love and appreciate them, what can you genuinely do for them? Mm-hmm. If you can be of value and service to someone, They'll respond well generally to it. Some people are just swamped, you know, hammered. But think how you can help someone out. And in helping someone out, there's no downside. But the positive side is you might learn something. Mm -hmm. Um, And the double bump on that is you might, uh, there might be a friendship evolved from that, you know? Yeah. Always be helping. And good things will come back to you. It's yeah. that, um, I forget what that's called. That's like karma, good karma. Um, good karma, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I don't believe in karma, but I do believe that when you help people out, they feel that they owe you one. Mm-hmm. And as long as you're not helping people out purposefully um, with the intention of, um, we call it in Japanese, giri uh, kiseru, so to um, make someone feel that they owe you, Sometimes, sorry, Japanese, it comes to mind quicker than the English does. Make someone feel that they owe you because that's just so see-through. It's just, Mm -hmm. you know, um, people can smell that. But if you can reach out and, yeah, I'm rambling. Um, In terms of my, my, the one thing that uh, I wish I hadn't done, it was, uh, I'd say, take things personally. Okay. Um, So um, when I was talking about lean gains a lot at the start, um, I tried to... I put out a few articles on lean gains. Um, I then translated those into Japanese and I wanted to spread lean gains in Japan, right? Um, Martin Birkin, he was the first guy I was, uh, we were talking about and then we expanded, right? Um, there were a lot of, well, a lot, i tell you, I was going to say there were a lot of negative comments in this one Reddit thread, lean gains Reddit thread, mm-hmm. and I'd take them personally. Um, but I shouldn't have really, because um, I know here I was just trying to help. Yeah. Um, but uh, how can we say? The negative voices tend to stand out more than the positive ones, so try not to let that happen mm-hmm. to you. Um, just try and focus. If you can, keep a folder of um, positive comments. Right, and then maybe keep a folder of negative comments or make a checklist positive versus negative. So, if you're ever wondering whether you're doing anything good in the world, if you ever get something negative come back at you, just be like, ah, no, 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 actually, no, they're wrong. Um, and if you do screw up, just be straight. I screwed up. I screwed up. I'm sorry. So, today I got quite irate. Um, I just moved into this building, I handed uh, my shirt to the dry cleaners, it's come back with an iron mark on it, right? And, um, I sent it back and said, uh, my favorite shirt uh, has an iron mark on it now. I don't own an iron. Uh, <laughs> and they're like, oh, okay, we'll fix it. Shirt comes back, still got the iron mark on it. So my, um, still got the iron mark on it. And they're like, ah, oh, okay. So I'm waiting another day and I get a call from the, the company president on my phone this afternoon. I'm like, Hello? He's like, yeah, so we see this. Yeah, so it's basically a wrinkle stain. I'm like, no, it's not a wrinkle stain. It's an iron stain. He's like, well, it's a wrinkle stain. I'm like, okay, it's a wrinkle stain. 
I gave you my shirt, it was perfect, it's come back and it's knackered. And he's like, ah, well, my opinion of that is that it's shkatane, which means it couldn't be helped. These things happen. And I'm like, well, no, I've given you my shirt, it's come back knackered. These things don't just happen. That's just how it is. That is an example of bad business. Yeah. When you mess up, say, I'm sorry, I will offer to pay for your shirt. So I said to him, I want you to buy me a shirt. And he says, okay, I'll do my best to fix it. But I know what's going to happen. Tomorrow, I'm going to get a call. And he's going to say to me, ah, oh, we tried to fix your shirt. We couldn't fix your shirt. And I'm going to go, okay, well, I would like you to pay for my shirt. And he's going to go, ah, oh, I can't do that. And I'll be like, look, man, the shirt's going to cost you $120. Right? It was an expensive shirt. Are you going to leave me out for that? And he'll be like, yes. And I'll be like, okay. This is what I'm going to do. First of all, I want you to open your computer. I want you to go to andymorgan.com, athletebody.jp, ripbody.com, and muscleandstrengthpyramids.com. Do you find those websites? Yes. Now, I want you to imagine a page in Japanese that has my review of your company's service on there. Right Now, I want you to Google yourself. Now, I want you to see that you come up first in Google. What is going to come up third, fourth, fifth? And sixth, from now on, anytime someone Googles your company name. Because right? what you've just done isn't fair and isn't right. Do you want that? Or are you going to do what you're responsible for and buy me my shirt? Right? Mm -hmm. um, I would never do that. Right? But I just, I hate it when someone picks on the little guy when they're in a position of power, yeah. I just think it's absolutely disgusting. Like, I could crush this guy. I would never do that. If he wants to have that bad karma, whatever, you know? I, I just I hate it when people abuse their power and, and don't do right by people. I can't fucking stand that. Mm -hmm. it, there's, there's nothing that gets me more irate than that, and only to my own disadvantage right now, right? To my own discredit, because now maybe... People listening to this are like, oh, Andy's a bit of a vindictive bastard. But, <laughs> you know, like if, if I can use my influence to, to help, because I'm not really thinking about myself. Okay, it's $100 shirt, whatever, 100 bucks, I'll eat yeah. that. But, uh, and, and, and I've grown out of it. Uh, it's a bit tight anyway, right? I need to size up, right? Um, so it's fine, it doesn't matter. But if I can. If that's happened to me within two weeks, it's probably happened to some other people. But from now on, it'll probably treat people right. Yeah. You know? And I think that's important. And I think in all of our dealings that we have online, for everyone that does a shit job online, right? Um, if we can be this, this shining example of how online coaching should be done and do a really, really good job, then we online coaches it will get a good reputation and more people will start thinking about hiring online coaches and we that do a good job and care about our clients will rise to the top mm -hmm. right yeah sorry rant over yeah. no I, could, I, I understand that and that actually has reminded me of just a small story me and my friend went to subway after going to the gym and the guy was basically like he was making our subway he toasted it he then got a phone call went on the phone he then started doing the other people behind us we'd been in there for like 15 minutes it was getting stone cold and we were just looking at each other like we're gonna have to leave because this is just the service was awful and every time i experience bad service it always makes me think of like if I ever did that to a client, they'd just leave and you'd get a bad reputation and like you could, they could, like you, they could rate you badly. So I think reputation and giving good service and like you said, just being nice, looking what you can do for others are really good takeaways for people who are looking to develop and get better in this what, like, online coaching space. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Just treat people how you'd want to be treated. Yeah. And, uh, and if you... If you, um, and that doesn't mean pandering to everyone, it just means setting clear expectations at the outset. Do that, you'll do well. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. And so if people want to get more from yourself, I think we've said ripbody.com quite a few times. So if they haven't realized <laughs> that's the place to go to, and that's really where you would 
can you find your Facebook links on there and everything, or are you kind of a bit dotted? Uh, yeah, uh, so the I think it's ripbody.com. It's facebook.com slash ripbody.com cool. is the Facebook page. Um, and uh, Facebook forward slash Andrew John Morgan. If you want to add me there, I don't really talk that much about fitness, although I think I'll do a little bit more. Everyone seems to want to add me there for some reason. <laughs> don't really know why. Tend to talk about cars and stupid shit, but whatever. You're more than welcome. Um, let's just say I don't actually have 2,000 friends in real life, right? <laughs> just between you and me. Um, and yeah, the, just basically all the important links are on the website. Um, um, and then the other one is muscleandstrengthpyramids.com. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, I'll put all of those in the link below and you can get the last shred which we talked about in the previous podcast and a few coaching points in here. That will be there as well. So I just want to thank Andy for coming on the podcast and spending two hours with me. Um, it's been a really good time. We both need to get some protein in because we're going to miss out on that anabolic window. <laughs> so um, I will catch him soon, I'm sure. And yeah, just want to thank the audience for listening. So cheers, Andy. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you, guys.